What's up, everybody? Brian Olivard, Atlanta's real tall realtor. Um, I am broker of uh, five uh, in Tennessee and Georgia. So uh, excited to be here. And agent to agent is probably our largest pillar and has been for the past few years. Um, I've been with Tom Ferry for a little while. So that's a huge part of my networking platform. Who here wants more agent to agent referrals? Everybody, right? You can never have enough. All right, so rule number one, A, if you're not on camera, that's your choice, but B, at least when you jump on these masterminds, let's change our names to our name and our location. Because right now, I just know that you guys are somewhere in the country and a part of real estate. And so let's show up to win and make sure, because it's our job to let people know where we reside in and where we serve. So that is my first rule kind of like all of this. That way I know who I'm talking to, what part of the country and all of that good stuff. Cause you can never not have enough. Jessica Forrester in Destin, Florida. Thank you for that. I got uh, Joan there in Boise. And so as you do it, any mastermind that you get on, it's an opportunity for you to shine and for you to present where you thrive and where you sell. So that's rule number one. Um, so when I joined TF, um, and I know some of you are in Tom Ferry, some of you aren't, and there's other coaching opportunities out there. Um, I wanted accountability, not just from my coach, but also from the incredible agents that make up the ecosystem of Tom Ferry. And so that's something that I sought after. And the only way to do that was to find a way to get in front of these people. And so I'm a social butterfly. If you've ever been to an event, I'm, I'm doing the ducking so you don't have to. And I'm a very recognizable person, but that doesn't mean you have to be. Um, everybody's got a different personality trait. We all have different lead pillars. So identify those and find your tribe. That is like the biggest thing for this. You're not going, somebody says Atlanta, Georgia, I may not be a fit for whatever's coming out the gate, whoever the client is. So always be prepared to do your value proposition, not as just sellers and buyers, but also Agents are our clients, and I've always treated it as such. Now, I have very dear friends in this ecosystem, so I don't look at them as money, but I do look at them as partners, partners in the growth of my business and their own. Um, I plan my prom. I plan parties. I was a banquet manager in college. So for me, I like to connect people. If you're more of an introvert, you're going to think I'm a psycho. I've also had a full Celsius today, so um, but it doesn't have to be for you, all right? So understanding agent to agent, all right? So I'm going to pick on a few people. If you've ever been to a Brian Olivard, uh, you know, meetup, uh, I do like to call people out. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of always being the one speaking. So Jessica Forrester, one of my oldest friends in the Tom Ferry ecosystem and somebody that I've worked side by side with in regards to this pillar. Um, what is agent to agent? Like, what does that mean? Uh, to me, it's it's forming relationships and actually getting to know people when we go to this event these events um it's it's about learning about them not you right so rule number 1 is always contribute more than you take and that's how i started my like this pillar to expand as large as it does we do on average 25 plus agent to agent referrals just in atlanta alone and it's because I was connecting people before I was actually getting any referrals. So for Craig Smizer, who I know is in Austin, Texas, um, I would find out what his business was about. That way I could keep an eye out for referrals for him, not for myself. So nurturing those relationships, this is a partnership in business. This is one of the beautiful things is this lead source allows you an already, well, 90% of the time, an already warmed up lead that has trust in the person that's trusting you with the referral. So that's an easy layup. You just have to take it the rest of the way. So creating these partnerships, trying to find best agents in the area. And I'd like to talk about at the end, now with the new NAR settlement, what that looks like for the partners that you already have, because if they can't bring a buyer brokerage to the table, zero dollars is 25 percent of zero percent so be careful and be mindful i just had on my agent to agent mastermind uh meetup 
uh, one of the coaches was asking these questions and we were kind of talking about what that looks like. So agent to agent is going to change a little bit as the industry continues to change as well. But I want to talk about that at the end. Um, don't just look within brokerages. Be very brokerage agnostic about who you're choosing because the choice is not to get Craig money in his pocket. Obviously, I'd love to make that happen. But I want to interview Craig and say, oh, does he even work with empty nesters or first time home buyers or VAs or whatever the avenue is? Find out what their specialty is. Now, it doesn't mean he can't curb all of his expertise to a particular demographic, but knowing what that is, it might be a better personality fit. It might be a better, you know, they, they want to shop this way and he works in this way, whatever that looks like. It has to be a great match. Because at the end of the day, our responsibility is to make it a knock it out of the park experience for the referred client, not just for the partner. And then if you have a true partnership, if you don't sell that area, be like, I don't sell that area. Determination to make sure it's good, not desperation. It's one of my biggest things. Now, you're only as good as your last deal. That's my biggest thing in real estate. I hate an agent that says, oh, my resume, I'm amazing. Now, look, I do 25 plus deals a year in Atlanta. That doesn't mean I just sit there and go, oh, everybody's just going to keep referring me for Atlanta. Joan loves me. We've known each other for years. She's just going to keep referring me. No, you got to keep elevating like you would at a listing presentation, a buyer presentation, or just out there on any part of life, right? So you've got to elevate as the industry changes. So constantly be, and if you mess, like if you have one deal that wasn't great, own it and then see how you can perfect it. I love an exit strategy whenever, and I love a review because it gets... The feedback allows us to grow as an individual and as a business professional. So sales is sales is sales, guys. The process is the process is the process. Do you have a consult process for, like if you go to a buyer consultation, do you have your pitch and all of the things that you offer, how you handle the, the lead, the handoff, the payment and everything? Is that strategic? Or are we sitting there going, oh, I forgot to send you the referral paperwork. Well, did, did we send that out? And it does happen, guys. It happens. But what is our consult process? Because if you're going up against three or four people on one of these real estate social media platforms and you're fighting for them, what is that consult that's going to help you get in front of the agent? I sell Atlanta. Oh, my God. I grew up here my whole life. I don't give a damn. I did not grow up in Atlanta. But I live, eat, and breathe Atlanta, and I know it. And my husband over here, he's been there for 30 years. So what I don't know, we tee it off to him. So making sure you actually bring a strategy, a plan, and a consult, because it shouldn't be just a text message. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret. Don't take this out here and use it against me. Most agents will throw their name, because we're all just too busy for more leads, We'll throw their name in the hat, fingers crossed, and hope that they get called on. Pick me, pick me, not me. Hey, Craig, Brian Olivard, Atlanta's Real Tall Realtor. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we have run into each other. Anyway, I saw that you had a first time home buyer. We actually specialize in that because you want to tell me a little bit more. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So they're looking to up. Okay, that's that makes more sense now. And if you personally work with them, well, let me tell you how we work. And this is one of the things that we like to do. So first of all, this is our largest lead pillar, Craig. And I appreciate just the opportunity to interview. I never assume just because I know somebody that I'm automatically going to get it. Because guess what? Personality differences. I've had people that have asked for a female. I have asked for, you know, so uh, like different demographics and that I don't fit in. And that's okay. And I always find them the right thing. So Make sure you have a consult process and your value proposition in there and make the phone call immediately. You have a higher chance of uh, getting the lead because most people will go in there and they're like, I got a referral and it could be a, a non-qualified lead. But if I go, Craig, I got this Zillow lead came in. You want it? I don't know your follow-up. We haven't talked about that. I haven't done any follow-up. So here's this just name and phone number that I'm giving you. Is that deserving of a 25% referral? I don't think so. So I would never just say, hey, I got this lead that came through. I'd at least nurture it to the point so I could actually partner with Craig 
And now I'm about to sing Prague Referral after this, guys. I've been picking on up so much. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, let me find your referral, Craig. But make sure you're nurturing on this side and you're doing the layup and handoff properly. That's a huge part of this. Now, let's talk networks, how to build a strong network. So who does agent to agent referral in here? And I know a lot of people. So, so Chris McCall, how are you? Tell me about how many a, a, a year are you doing? Do you think? No, uh, so I just actually started in January um, with five, and just my actual career, uh, you know. So I've got uh, already a few deals in, but I do, you know, send things out, you know, through if if I can't uh, get through or even meet up with the you know potential lead, I'll send you know send a little information out, things like that. So then whoever could pick it up can go and take the ball from there. Okay. All right. So do you have, would you say a healthy amount of referral partners for that are doing real estate in and outside of your area? Um, I have a handful right now. I have a, you know, decent following on Instagram, things like that. So I'm able to kind of maybe reach out, but um, I'm starting to build my LinkedIn up a bit so I can, you know, start moving in that direction. And are you scheduling coffee appointments if they're local or Zooms if they're not, just to figure out what's going on with their business? Uh, yes, uh, more more Zooms or calls, not not coffee. Okay, it depends on if they're local or not. So it just depends on how that works. Um, Brian, so one of the... can I can I chime yes, in? I think it's pertinent to be able to talk beforehand. I know you're getting to like the the weeds of like what to do afterwards, but even the beginning. How do you foster the relationship so that you can become the, the agent? What, we're doing. what? Yeah, we're gonna go into the strategies. Okay, sorry. So so how I'm not yeah. So I'm not having uh thank you for that comment. Uh so part of it is the strategies, it's having the conversations, joining masterminds. First, we have to find the lead, right? We have to find the agent. So how are we finding the agent? So Chris said he's getting LinkedIn and Instagram. Where else can we find agents? Networks. Events. Attend, attend conferences from our partners. I'm sorry? Michelle? I said referrals from our partners, like you know, other agents have, that have used people in, in other areas. Yeah. And let's say, Rochelle, you and I do a deal and we close it and I call you and say, hey, we closed. I'm so appreciative of that. Real quick, do you have other referral partners that I should be meeting? Because they probably, if they're networking with you or rock stars just like you, I really appreciate what you've done. Can I get those names? Just like you would ask a seller or a buyer, is there anybody that you can refer me? And then you start building that out. So I probably have more conversations with agents throughout the week than I do with consumers, because this is a part of our pillar biz, uh, to grow this side of the business. Join real estate groups. Is anybody a part of the social media real estate groups? Do y'all do that on Facebook? Is there more than one? There's like a thousand, yeah. There's realtors that mastermind, there's realtors for masterminds, there's yes. realtors in masterminds. It's like all of them. Yes. Alicia, I see you on there. Thank you. Okay. So going in those real estate groups, now you getting your name on those sites, putting your name up to receive a referral is not as important as me putting going, hey guys, I just saw this awesome thing and this perspective on it is this. And being able to contribute something that helps people think about their process a little bit. And then the comments, the people that comment, then go back and engage with them. Joan, I, I, I appreciate you liking my comment. So you guys are doing a ton of agent to agent. Awesome. It's one of our biggest pillars. Let me ask you, like, what is y'all steps of service for that? I'd love to always kind of perfect mine. And I know y'all have a fantastic relationship. So what does that look like? And then dive deeper into their businesses. Most agents don't take the time to talk to agents because we're so fearful. Back in the day, it used to be fearful to swap any kind of secrets or, or anything. 
And depending on if you get in the right ecosystems, they're always happy to rip off and duplicate. But sometimes your local people that not necessarily are out of state, but they just may not serve your market. Like Atlanta is really large. And if I go to all the way to South Georgia, I mean, we do serve all of that. But I want to know what's making those uh, agents so successful. So you just have those conversations and come from a place of curiosity. Locate your feeder markets. Who's moving to Atlanta? If I see and I didn't get the referral in a Facebook group and somebody said, oh, Paul Amy Jones, I don't care. I really wish I would have gotten that and I did everything I can. And maybe it was my fault. Maybe they got to it before. But I'm going to go see where Amy Jones is from. I want to know why they're moving. And I go, hey, Amy, I, I, I appreciate, you know, the opportunity to just chat with you for a second. I know that you've already, you know, given out that referral. But let me ask you, was it what was the purpose of the referral? Like, were they moving because they were being relocated? They're marrying somebody from afar work, you know, whatever that looks like. And then you start to piece those together. So guess what? If I see another one come up from that same area, I might want to go in and start getting in touch with all the people that are in that area that I search in that Facebook group that are from Tampa, Florida. Because now I know that's a feeder market. And I'm going to go ahead and start inquiring and start sharing my business so that they think of me. Do you mind if I go ahead and put you in my database and, uh, you know, keep in touch just in case I have anybody to send to you? No, nobody's going to tell you no. And so you start collecting that and then housing them in a CRM. Um, always contribute more than you take. We're selling trust here. If I send you an agent just because they were in my brokerage or they look like they're the most popular, but I've never interviewed and dot, 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 and that goes wrong. Who's the client blaming? This guy. So I want to make sure it's a perfect fit from start to finish because I need to know what the client's looking for and how the agent works. So making sure that you're really investigating that side, stay away from the cheerleader platforms. I know that there's a ton of groups out there, but if you do have a group that always puts you up, let that group come from a place of, I know Nazar's amazing because I had this experience and that experience, and I can speak to the proof of success. If you can't speak to the proof of success, should you be referring to them? And now we have to ask ourselves that because I want to make sure that they're getting those brokerage agreements signed so that we get paid. Otherwise, if I'm sending it just to the first name that pops up, we're not getting paid. Um, identifying potential referrals. Brian. Who moves? Real quick. Go ahead. I, I, I'm going to interject. I apologize. Uh, actually, oh. I don't apologize. I'm going to interject. Um, Go. Tell me how many transactions you've done um, like in the last 12 months from referrals again. I know you already said it, but I think it's important to reiterate what that number is. What is that number? Last year, we closed 48 five markets transactions for the top three ecosystem. This year, we have... Go ahead. This year, we probably on our board have close to 25 that are out there standing. So just, just not everything closes, guy. Just to clarify, are these, uh, you know, 40 plus transactions, are you, are you counting referrals going in and out or are you just referring to referrals coming in? Yeah. Both. Referrals in and out. Okay, but perfect. 80% of them. So 80% of that 40 is referrals coming in to you. Okay. Correct. And I am not that good at math to know that number. So if I do 40 times 80%. Okay. So let's call it 30, 32 transactions that you did last year or from referrals coming into Atlanta and that you got them. And there's plenty of other yeah. agents in the Tom Ferry network or in other networks that could have gotten those referrals, but you got them. And I'm, I mean, honestly, if I really got to know you really well, when I think of Atlanta, I think of another person. Um, and, you know, I won't mention their, their name, but it's interesting that just because the name that I've associated with, and I think a lot of people associate with Atlanta, is not the person that's getting all the referrals. And so clearly yeah. there's something that is out there because a lot of people have that misconception, and including myself. When I think of California, I'm like, there's a thousand or just in general. And so when I think of getting the referral, 
It's a thing. Hey, I'm looking for an agent in Southern California. There because it's, there's just too many agents. And so it's interesting to me that that's kind of been my negative mindset. And so, you know, think about it, you guys, 32 transactions. Now, you know, I'm sure that you may not know this number off the bat, but if I say how many, how much dollar amount did that represent? That's a lot of money. Yeah. Right. And imagine if you guys just even got a fraction of that and you added that to your business, how would that change? Okay. Sorry. What, what's the percentage of a Zillow lead that you pay out for referral? Almost, is it 40% now? I, don't I think it's 45. It's, I don't think it's 45. I think it's 40. 40. 40. So this is a cheaper lead cost. And it's already teed up and you didn't have to go and compete with a bunch of people. Because once it's sent to you, now never think that it's just and you know, automatically yours, like you still have to do all the things. But once it's sent to you, you've now shut off all of those other agents that are competing for it. And now you just have to shine. 25%. So that's like a huge thing. This is a massive before, I think last year was the first time that they had it on the business plans to do that. But I knew that this was a pillar of business a long time ago. I think John and I spoke on something together during COVID. I can't remember what it was. And, you know, we were talking, maybe it was client events or maybe it was ages to age and I can't remember. But um, really knowing that this is a lead pillar, we are all not just of value in like how we think, but we also can contribute and partner with each other. I mean, over the years, I've sent, you know, more referrals to like my people and sometimes I'll connect. That's another reason that I think people always thought of me for agent to agent was because I would connect when there was no monetary benefit for me. If I want Jesse to, you know, Jesse, I don't know where you're at, but if, if I wanted Jesse and, and I really liked her and I thought she was amazing and I knew she was in everywhere USA, and somebody goes, I need somebody in everywhere USA. I'd go, oh, you got to talk to Jesse. I'm not doing it as a cheerleader. I just know that there's a benefit and the law of reciprocity is going to happen. So I know that eventually she's going to send to me. And it's good to have multiple partners, just like you want multiple title attorney lenders, because not everybody's going to be the fit for who they're looking for. And you have to be okay with that especially when you're in these metropolitan cities, unless you're looking for Atlanta, then there's no other choice. But um, yeah, so any, Nazar? Yeah. What, any other questions? <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's, I, I find it peculiar that those, like when we call it a lead pillar, in the past I used to call my sphere a lead pillar. But I literally never did anything strategic with that lead pillar to generate business. But I would get naturally, I'd get business just because of, you know, people knew who I what who I was and what I did. And, you know, lead pillar of referrals is also another one of those categories where you can either be strategic about it or you could hope and pray that something falls in your lap. And it's also important to realize that just like you experienced, that leads go both ways it's not just receiving it's also giving because that's also yeah. money in your pocket because those my opportunities are so missed if you think about like you should know in your area just like you said where are people going and where are people coming like who's coming into your neighborhood and who's leaving and when they leave where do they go and so if they go right. somewhere like in california a lot of people go to arizona texas nevada um and so if those are your spots then you should have a really good network of agents that are in those areas Idaho is the same thing, right? Lots of people leave California, go to Idaho. Like you should have a really good connection. Like if you're in Idaho, then you should know all the realtors in Northern and Southern California. You should have a really good connection with all of them so that when they think of Boise or Meridian or Eagle, they automatically think of you guys, right? And that's the same way with every single one of us, again, in both directions. Um, I've done interviews before and I've had, and I've been involved with interviews where agents interview me because people want to come in my neighborhood or my area and they interview me about what's special about here. And I'm assuming that, you know, that, that either you've done that, Brian, or it's been done to you, or you've done that with other people. I think it's a really cool way to be able to, again, 
strategically look at how you could foster those relationships with those agents. And it's your job to stand out. So think about the process. So I'm moving, I got a new job, I'm going to Utah. I'm probably gonna go there if I have kids or if I have something, I'm probably going to go investigate. I might go to a couple open houses. I might do this, that, and the other. Well, they're probably talking to the other side before they even try to call the person referring out and vice versa. So you've got to get to the other side. If they're already shopping for agents on that other side and you don't know about it, you want to have enough agents in that market to refer it back to you and vice versa. So... It's got to be before it gets put on there. Like I look at, you know, all of these different social media platforms. They're fantastic, but that's playing at a very mediocre level. Doing the above and beyond to build nurture relationships in areas that you know have an opportunity to pop up for you, because it may not be the person you're talking to. It could be inside of their local office. We get a ton of those. Where they're like, oh, I heard you're the guy in Atlanta. Somebody, I put it up in my Caldwell at whatever and, you know, all of these different things. So it's a lead pillar. If we could time block to do so, we could build relationships and really know and find something that stands out about your market. Because just saying, oh, I'm in Destin, Florida. Well, if you are nowhere near the panhandle, you're going to go, I'm not really sure what part is destined. Like, does that start here? Is that there? If you're, you know, anywhere in Florida, people know Miami. Well, at least me, and I'm in the South. I go, okay, there's Miami and the panhandle. Everything else in the middle is Disney. Like, that's how I think of it. So what's the distinguishing factor? Like, the thing that's going to stand out to figure that out. Now, I did hear, and I'll share this on one of our calls this past Monday, was it this Monday? I forget when it was. And the agent sent a, um, a kit, a referral kit, which I love this idea and I'm going to start adding it. It's a, um, Alicia, were you on that call? Jessica, I don't know. Somebody was on that call. It was like not a preparedness, like a survival kit. It was a, whatever the next state was, it was a survival kit. And it was all the things that they will love from the area. And that's what her listing. Wanted. She dropped it off after she got the listing. And then it was a survival kit they to get down to Florida, right? Down to Florida? Yes. It was on, yeah. Vanessa on Susan Cadillac's team. Yep. Very nice. Sort of and I love that kind of mindset. I had a client, they could not decide whether they were going to move to Tampa or to Atlanta. So they came in and we had coffee when they came in while we were touring and they love this local coffee shop. And so I gave them, I said, I'm not sure where your decision falls, but here's the, you know, because they, they were interviewing other people. I said, here's that local call, a bag of that coffee, just in case that way you don't have to keep traveling here. And it kind of, and I got a mugs and everything. And it was like a whole gift going above and beyond those little surprise and delights. Those are the things that kind of really nurture those transactions too. If I could add one so, little piece that, that another agent's done to me, which I found very, very effective is that they put me in their CRM system as an agent and they put on there um, this you know, SOP that they created where every, I think it was every week I get an email, which was automatic, right? It wasn't something that they like typed out and it said, Hey, can you give us an update on the referral that we sent you for bananas, you know, for this couple or whatever it was. And I thought it was really genius because it was, it gave me accountability and it gave them an opportunity to be able to find out what was happening with that lead that they gave us. And on, on the flip side of it, you know, if you're the agent that's handing that referral, or if you're the one that's receiving the referral, if you take a proactive approach and give the agent that gave you that referral a weekly update, like, can you imagine how much more powerful that is? Because I've given plenty of referrals out where I'm like, I, I know nothing that happened to it. And I completely forgot about it. And then like two months later, I get a paycheck or I get a check. I'm like, oh, that was cool. But it would have been so much better for me to like have been updated, notified, hey, we opened escrow, you know, on this referral that you gave us. Hey, we 
you know, we just did the uh, inspections and whatever it is, because if I have a connection with that referral, it'd be cool for me to be able to be in the know. So when I do talk to them, I don't sound stupid, you know, like I have to fish for information from them directly. So that makes sense. I, I don't know. What, what do you guys do in, in, in being able to communicate with the agent once you get that referral? So the secret sauce, I'll give you this. And again, don't use it against me. Nazar tees me up and passes me a referral. Okay. He's already done his part. Now, in my mind, my mindset is Nazar has nurtured this past client. He's probably bought a dinner or two or seven. It's been over the years. Like he's been marketing on his side. I think every agent deserves a 25%. And I get asked, is 20 okay? I our company standard is 25. And I will give you the additional 5% out of my respect for our partnership. I've had agents go, is 20% okay? And that's the interesting part. The referring agent thinks that they're burdening you with something. And I'm like, what? I was like, I'm honored that you would consider this. I'll give you 25. I know the work that goes into these relationships. So our standard for our company is 25%. I've had people reach for 30 and 35. And I always say that because people are going to be asking for higher referrals. You tell them, say, look, we never take more and we never ask for, uh, we never uh, take less and we never do more. Like, that's just the way that it is. Like, this is a partnership and I want to continue it on. So 25% and they always go fine. So Nazar sends me a thing. He gets immediate, small, little gift of appreciation. I haven't even talked to the client, anything. I'm already in gratitude that he is done what he's supposed to do, which is he has been generous enough to send me that. Now we get the paperwork and all the admin and stuff go into that. Then the client consultation goes into play. I update in every milestone. I don't have like a strategic thing. I just like to talk to the people that I'm about to go ahead and pay out. I was like, cha-ching, we're coming along. We just passed due diligence. We're doing whatever. It gets them excited. I don't want to have to ask them for paperwork at the end of the transaction because I want to talk about, you know what? I really appreciate that, Joan. You know, this, that was so great getting to know them and I could see why they loved you so much and da 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 and all of that. And then I will go ahead and get your best mailing address. We're going to send the commission check wherever, but I want your best mailing address and hopefully not your office because we know that that may you may never go into the office. You instantly get a gift from us at the end of closing. And then I like to go into where, I mean, if you, however you treat your buyers and sellers, if you do client events, if you do gifts for them annually for the holiday, I we do gratitude cards for Thanksgiving. Just, you know, hey, because everybody gets like stuff for Christmas. I like to do gratitude cards and say, you know what? I really appreciate the opportunity to be in business with you. And it's different every year. And then those agents that referred to us for that year get a holiday gift. But everybody that's ever referred to us, and that's our annual boom, 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 boom. So can you give us a little bit of an idea of what the initial gift is for just the referral, even if it doesn't work out? Um, and I'm looking at Ryan's face yes. and I'm scared to ask. So tell us what that is, or, or if it's a secret. Um, then, you know, like it's not a secret because I, I, I have a lot of partners on here too. So, yeah. so what is uh, that? the first What's... thing you get, go ahead. So the first, the first gift we do is a textable QR code. I mean, a uh, barcode for my Starbucks account. And it says, thanks a latte, have a tall one, real tall real estate, tell your friends, have a tall one on us. Okay. So that's the first thing that goes out. And hold on. And I can just. I, I'm very much. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So I need I need it for you to dump it down. So is that a one cup of coffee, a.k.a. like you put 10 bucks on there? Is it a I get to like buy as much as many coffees as I want on you? Tell me that. What for is that? Partners in this, are, this is an honor policy. I'm going to send this. If you want to treat your admin as well, I'm happy for that too. I do not care because a five to $7, eight or nine, depending on the area is not going to make or break that transaction. And I'm using it. It's less than a Google pay per click. I'll so what show you what, what's that? Are you saying that there's no, like you don't put a limit on that? 
Hell no. I put a $75. That way, if somebody gets crazy and starts cashing it out, it reset itself. But I mean, $75 is, I don't okay. put a limit. I'm, this, I'm selling trust. That's what I'm doing. And I'm happy to do it. That's interesting. I don't know where the picture is. I won't yeah. take advantage of that when, when that opportunity hits. Okay, so the first one is just a cup of coffee. Hey, get a, get a tall one on me. And you're giving them the luxury of saying, you know, get the grande or the whatever it's called, the, the, the largest one. Um, that happens. I love it because it's not like I'm going to give you a $5 because we used to do $5 Starbucks gift cards. That doesn't even buy you a cup of coffee anymore. So, um, you know, we switched to 10, but I love like just getting a code where then it doesn't matter, you know, they're getting the actual cup of coffee independent of what it costs. And then you said you, the second gift you sent them is when the, the transaction closes. Is that correct? Yeah. So we'll mail out and it could like, it depends on how many we had. Like it could be just a quarterly thing where we'll send everybody out the gift, and it's a squirrel with our logo on it. And it says, we're nuts about referrals. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we send you toffee peanuts. It's simple and it's stupid guys, but it, they just, they're like, oh my God, it's great. Right. Like, it's just the little thought process. Like, send me some candy. I don't care. I know Nazar likes those little nerds or whatever. Maybe that's the gift that you send or whatever. The Mike and Ikes, that's what they are. Guess what? That should be in your CRM that you know he likes the Mike and Ikes because then that's the way to get them. And he's like, damn, I can't believe you remembered. I like that candy. So, the, but these are the key points that if you pay attention, I had somebody who I knew was like, had a peanut allergy. So I sent him plain M&Ms. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Their child had a peanut allergy and they were and I, they were traveling and I brought them the peanut M&Ms because they weren't going to see the child. So there was no like whatever. And they were mm -hmm. like, damn, I can't believe you remembered that. And so those are the moments. I follow a simple quote from Maya Angelou. They may not remember what you said and they may not remember what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And I've lived every part of my business through that. So then after that, we do, it, it could be anything. We do the gratitude cards and then we did Southern Jams this year and it said, spread the joy. Um, if you know anybody else looking to relocate to the area, blah, 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 blah. Make it local. What's the likelihood of you getting, because if like, let's say I send you a referral and it's just a one-off, right? Like what's the and then if you put me on your crm and you start like you know send me gifts and annual stuff which is cool because it'll still remind me of who you are but what's the likelihood of me sending you a second referral does that happen a lot it happens but also it happens within offices remember you're bleeding out your brand okay gotcha so it's more you're like top of mind. Out the brand. yeah 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 okay. your top of mind we're not sending every year the year you send us you get that gotcha. and i also alongside our wonderful Jessica Forrester and a few other amazing hosts, we have a client party two times a year. The Summit Super Social. And we've done it for, I don't know how many years now, we do one at Summit. So it's the largest client event you could possibly host. Because guess what? You may not have sent us a referral, but who are you thinking of next time? Or give me that cocktail back. No, I'm just kidding. But it's kind of the client event. So everything you do with agent to agent should be very mirrored to what you do with buyer and seller leads. Your past client, your sphere of influence. If you're having an annual pie, pumpkin pie pickup for your clients for the holiday, how do you how do you make that fun for agent to agent? I would imagine that the like the you know you won when you get that referral without having to compete with other agents, right? Like, so if I had a referral for Lana, I'm not going on the Tom Ferry, you know, webpage and saying, Hey, who, who do we know in Atlanta? I'm already like, th there's no other competition. I'm going straight to you. And that's when you know you yeah. want. So right. I love that. And that's really where the wind comes in, guys. You don't, you know, anybody that's a part of Tom Ferry and they go, check a loom. No, don't check a loom. Guess what? It's my fault. I wasn't your first person to think of for Atlanta. And if you constantly, Touch them every quarter. Do birthday cards. Like all of these little touches are what we should be doing for everything else. Who doesn't want a birthday card? There's an agent in Texas who every year sends me a personalized video and I know I'm getting it because it's consistent. Consistency is the other key to this. Let them expect your joy. 
Um, can we handle a couple of different uh, uh, um, or one objection and you tell me how you handle it? Yes. Um, I made the mistake recently of getting a referral and they're like, hey, you know what, you want to take this referral? And I said, sure, we're happy to. They're like, awesome. They gave us the contact information. They sent us over the referral agreement form and on there was 35%. Yeah. And so, you know, and and sometimes obviously you can have that conversation in advance. Um, and, you know, and because of these referral partners that are out there, like the Zillows and the realtors and yada, yada, it's becoming more of a trend to for realtors to ask for 35 instead of 25. And Again, I know that everything, including the you know commissions, are negotiable and referrals should be negotiable as well. So, from your perspective, you know, um, what is it like? If I were to say, "Hey, you know, Brian, I've got a referral uh, for Atlanta. They're sellers, rock solid, ready to go. Past clients are actually moving to my area. Um, you know, I'm asking for a 35 percent referral fee. What do you tell me?" You know, Nazar, I can respect that. And I'm not sure about your market, but I'm in the Tom Ferry ecosystem and I do over 25 to 30 agent to agents across the board. And we have a standard of 25%. This is what we do, A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to inform you each step of the way because I want to make sure that you look like a rock star and I'd really appreciate the opportunity to work for you. But our company has said 25%. They go, fine. Fine. You just have to say it. I know what I offer. I, Rob, where's Robert Mack? I have an un, unhealthy confidence level. All right. What, what if I change? I say when, I say where, I say how much. Like, that's it. All right. What if I said, this is my script to you? Hey, um, Brian, I am interviewing three people for the job of representing my client in selling their property in Atlanta. So I've got, you know, four or five names from, uh, you know, the, the Tom Ferry Network. And I'm just calling each one of them to see what they're going to do to help my client. And then two, you know, what, what's the referral fee they're willing to take? And then That's if you awesome. Me, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. What does your, uh, your interview process look like? Because what I'd like to do, Nazar, is actually connect you with a few people that I've actually shared referrals with inside the Tom Ferry ecosystem and have them discuss how the process was and how amazing their client spoke about us because that's the win. It's really about the client, right? Yeah, that, that that's fair. Um, you know, like I, I do want to give them the opportunity. You know, like it, it seems like the the trend is moving towards thirty five percent. How do you feel about that? As a I don't believe in trends. Excuse me. I don't believe in trends. <laughs> if you're if you're firm about it, nobody pushes back on that because remember we're in a partnership. Most of the people that I'm dealing with now, I had had some, I had somebody who goes, well, it's a Zillow lead, and it's I, I need forty percent. Hmm. Now, if it's a one point two, yeah, let's have a conversation. But you're not getting a coffee. Like it, it depends. It's going to be a case by case basis. But the thing is, I don't think as long as we we have to be in solidarity as the top producers in our industry to not let this other stuff affect how we do business. Because what happens? Let me ask you a question. When somebody cuts your commission, this is our, do you work as hard? And look, I don't care if I lose it at this point, because if you want an extraordinary like. If you're really trying to push me on this, I if if the client is like you, I don't want to work with them. I'll yeah. just continue to lead. I mean, Brian, at, at the end of the day, you know, you'll always find another agent that will pay you more referral fee, uh, a higher referral fee. The, the 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 fear I have with that, or the 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 you know concern I have with that is, you know, what is that agent really providing? Because if all they're doing is just, you know, trying to win your or earn your business by giving you more money they're not gonna be able to close that transaction. And at the end of the day, if the transaction doesn't close, it doesn't matter what the referral fee is, right? Yeah. Um, okay, any other thoughts, Brian, about um, referrals and how to be more strategic in our, like, you know, I would say the, the, the baby steps would be to friend realtors. And then if you want to be more, more strategic, friend realtors in the areas that you believe people are coming from and are going out to, you know, like build those relationships, both on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and, you know, continue to foster that. What else would you advise as far as like the, the basics of starting out? Like, how do we do that? I was on a mastermind and something that I've incorporated 
if you know the five, five, four, add another four. And the four is agent to agent. Love that. It, it, it is another pillar. It opens up like a peach. Hashtag Atlanta. Jessica, you have your hand raised. Hello, I was trying to be very polite. Um, one, one other tip I can throw in there is that when you see on social media, somebody's looking for an agent in your area, take out your phone right then and there and send them a video message saying their name. Hey, Brian, this is Jessica. Tons of great agents are listed. Uh, we and our show back behind me, our specialty is this, this, and this. We would love to be interviewed for your referral. And that that personal touch right there is something that nobody else is doing. I do have another thing, and that's amazing because I've done that for years and I knew Nazar was going to throw me off. That's why I was like, all questions at the end. But reviews. Get those Google reviews from those partners after you close, not just from the client, but also the people you're doing business with. Because mm -hmm. then, much like a listing, you can show that those those reviews and the experience and who's and and it's the law of reciprocity. And I'll write one for you, Nazar, and blah 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 blah. Have those Google reviews because that's also going to assist in that. And there was two other things I wanted to add to that, but um, those have gone away. So. Uh, <laughs> But yes, so use that in your favor because those people will also, and if I say, oh, if you look on Facebook and they're friends with Jessica Forrester and I'm like, hey, it looks like, you know, Amy Jones, um, do you mind giving her a shout for me? I'll do the same for you. That reciprocity definitely helps because I've worked with Jessica on referrals she sent me and vice versa. So we know how each other work. So if you have that relationship and the more that you do, make sure you're staying in contact because if you just go, all right, I got that. Now you're not keeping up with them. You can continue to help each other in those different ways. If Joan tells me, you know, hey, Brian, I see, you know, your friends and she'll message me. I'm happy because I know how Joan works. I know what she's about and I'm willing to put my name on the line to make sure that she thrives because I know that she would do the same for me. So those relationships, it's the relationships that matter. It'll take you places money can't. And if you think like that, you this will thrive for you. I love it. Any other last minute thoughts before we end? Yeah, any questions, guys? I know that my personality is like all over the place, but if you're if you're an introvert, this can be a great thing for you too. Just find your people. Like, it doesn't have to be where you're hosting an event or you're rah-rah. Like, I'm a high D, high I. But if you're not, there's a ton of those SCs that are there that are willing to, like, y'all can find your commonality. Can I say one more thing? So another way, because you just said if you're an inter introvert, another thing that you can do is not even give referrals, but in the ecosystems that you're in, be present and contribute things that are working for you. And yeah. so that's a way to connect with people without having to go to networking events and, and being the social butterfly. Love it. Hey, Brian, can I add something? Yes, please. So I think it's important when you, when you get agent referrals, and I, I know there's mixed feelings about this, but we had a client or an agent who referred like three or four people, buyers to us. And then those people referred and referred and referred. I always made a point to going back to the original agent. He was always surprised, like, where did this come from? Your client referred their friends. So we paid them a referral fee on that. And then what did he nice. do after that? <laughs> then he continued to send more people to us. So I think that's important to think about. Don't cut off the fire hose. Like if it's going, you want to keep nurturing that. Again, I, th I think the overall arching message, at least from my takeaway from it, is that every single time we have these types of conversations, when, when we have you know an agent on here that's crushing it, in one category comes on, the very first thing I think of is if you've done 32 transactions receiving end, most agents don't do that in a year. Some agents don't do that in three years. And so like, think about it. 
you know, a lot of agents get analysis paralysis or they get fear and the deer in the headlights. Oh my gosh, the world is ending. I don't know how to create transactions. Where's my, and then they're like, you know, like little, little birds, like feed me, feed me. You guys take it, change the opportunity to think or change your, 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 your thought processes. What could you do to get opportunities? What could you do to get listings and buyer sales from like, what, what could you do to be able to take it instead of like waiting for it to come to you, you go out and get it, right? You can call expired. You can call this, you can go door knocking, but this is another lead pillar that if you just implement in your business, you work on it for one, two, three hours a week and be strategic about it. It's in your business plan. You can create, even if there's like two or three extra transactions a year from it, like think of how that could add to your bottom line. So make it a part of your business plan, be focused on it. It's not that difficult to, to create and foster relationships. Strive to attend at least two or three business networking conferences a year, because that's when you get to have face-to-face -face conversations and build those, those uh, relationships. And at the end of the day, just like, you know, what Brian was saying, like, once you get that opportunity, foster it, build it, do things that are outside the box to be able to connect with them and, and just, you know, showcase what you're going to do to help that client. And, you know, that that's like this masterclass alone can put an extra twenty to fifty thousand dollars in your pocket if you just put a little bit of time into it. So Brian, thank you so much for being on here. Thanks for preparing. And I apologize for if I derailed you, but you know that I would anyway. So it's just how it works. I knew you would. I know. Um anybody that wants to see my graphic of the coffee thing, DM me on IG and I'll also treat you to a coffee this afternoon. So <laughs> send me a uh, Paul Realtor and I appreciate everybody. Keep crushing it. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for being on here, you guys. Talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.